welcome to everything with Dofan. So yes. yesterday morning, I woke up to my Instagram page and I saw Kate Henshaw, because I'm her follower, brave woman. I saw Kate Henshaw posted something about Busola, popular Nigerian singer, Timi Dakolo, the one Nigerian great singer. The wife, that she stand with the wife and what, what, what. I was like, what's happening? We are already writing stories about controversial Nigerian pastors. But I was a little bit busy with some stuff, so I didn't even take time to look at it. So towards the evening yesterday, when we were closing from work, and I got talking to my staff, which is usually what we do, I relax myself and make them relax. Maybe from the shouting and screaming, I would have given them in the morning till evening for them to relax and we would chat, chat, chat over little things and then all of us will go home. I went and I watched Busola Dakolo's interview with why nigerian tv owned by red media i read the interview and i was like oh my god this is really really something that someone should listen to a pastor that he has been accused of a lot of things over time now a celebrity sort of because she's a celebrity wife and automatically if you're married to a celebrity people celebrate you too because you become popular and um, a lot of people know what marrying celebrity means so they feel you're successful already. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. When Nse Walter came out, they say she was chasing clout. So I was beginning to ask myself now, Timmy Dakolo's wife, what clout is she chasing now? What would she use Biodon Fato Yimbo name to her game now? I didn't understand what was going to be. Because if Timmy Dakolo's wife comes out now and grants interview, my six years married to Nigerian singer Timmy Dakolo, Everybody will read. It will burn the internet. It will lit up to the internet on fire. So I begin to say maybe there is an iota of truth in this thing. But who am I? I'm not a judge. And she didn't have proof. You can go to YTV. Other people are picking it, but I ha we have not been permitted to pick it. So we will not pick it, but we'll just cut little clip where it matters. Where she described how vividly how Fatou Evo came into the house. She started going to his church. It was not a church then, it was just a club, you know, and it was on a Saturday, he started going and he picked interest in her, he started counseling her, which has been the same line with every woman that have come out to talk about Fata Yimbo, that Fata Yimbo has slept with them or has abused them. Exactly, Somehow, which was a Monday, I remember the previous day was um, a Sunday service, and um, because there was no, no telephone, no mobile phone. It was before GSM. Yes. I didn't know, and um, it came to my house. My, meanwhile, my house then was, the gates opened, the living room is where you just knock the door, and someone will come downstairs and open the door. And this time, my mom had traveled with my younger sister. It, it was just myself and one of my elder sister that was at home, and my house, like a duplex, was a duplex, so big that if you're in a room upstairs down, you won't know what's going on downstairs, things like that. So I came down normal, normally the way I come down, it was like 6.30 to 7, it was pretty early. Right. I was still in my nightwear, I was wearing a gown, my nightwear, and I had the knock, who is that? Ah, Pastor Biodo. I was first of all like, I couldn't say anything like, what was it this time? Well? But um, immediately I just opened the door. He just pushed me. He didn't say anything. He didn't, um, he didn't utter any word. He just pushed me to one of the chairs in my living room. And I saw him like he was removing his belt. So I was like, what? He just said, keep quiet, do what I want you to do, and you'll be fine. But when he's tired with you, he begins to treat you badly. The same line, you know, and then he got close to her, and then got close to the family. In fact, her sisters were the ones that started going in the club before she got back from school, and she was introduced to the church. And then Fata Yimbo came to the house. She looked at him as a father figure, because they were going through some financial crisis and some other things. At this point, really, a whole lot was just going on in my head because it was more like someone that had put up here 
that I felt was really, really concerned about me. I had already felt him in the place of my, like a father that could speak to me, you know, guide me. He was there about to do something I did not believe. And then when I was just about to react, he just covered my mouth. And um, when he covered my mouth, just like, Osola, listen to me and you'll be fine. Just do what I want you to do. I didn't struggle. I didn't struggle. I just um, left him and um, he brought out his pennies and I was wearing a nightgown. I was wearing pants, pulled down my pants and that was how he, he found difficulty to enter but he just kept, I was like grunting, I would cry, I would, I was just doing a whole lot of mixed feelings and all that and then um, he eventually penetrated even blood okay, drop on I want to talk about phantom boss response. There is something in this response that really, really caught my eye. I am the publisher of the Papyrus. I own this channel. It's my private channel where I say anything and I will be held responsible for it. I won't go and drag the Papyrus staff in it to come and help me. So I really, really did not understand some of the things that Fanto Yimbo was saying in this, his reply to Busola's allegation that he raped her right in her father's sitting room in Ilorin before he became big. This is what he said. I am aware that there has been a recent media publication on YouTube by Y Ninja operated and owned by Red Media Group. Who shows an interview by Chudi Jide Ongu with Busola Dakolo? If you don't know Chudi, Chudi is a barista TV host that has been doing things like that. He owns a media place where you go and you tell your stories. Prior to now, we had adhered to our policy of ignoring rumor from social media accounts as we knew that several statements had been made to extort the church of money and myself through blackmail, harassment and intimidation. We have refused time and again to accede to their requests, which has infuriated them over time. Because of this, they have gotten more aggressive. Timi Dakolo and his wife, with their status in the society, at least they can feed themselves. And uh, Timi always have gigs almost every other week. They will use Whatsoever thing they have to extort money from Pastor Biodon Fatoibo. Some of this description in this letter does not even fit the woman they are talking about at all. Unlike previous statements where innuendos were used and there was no direct mention of myself or the church, the recent video released on YouTube has now made direct criminal allegations against me in the interview granted by Busola Dakolo which are fallacious, non-existent, and which are all denied in every major. As an individual and as a church, we have loved and support people, and we will never condone any form of abuse, rape, harassment, or intimidation of anybody. I have never in my life raped anybody, even as an unbeliever, and I am absolutely innocent of this. Busola Dakolo accused only Fatou Yimbo. She didn't accuse Koza. She didn't accuse the entire church of raping her. But he is playing a psychological game with the followers by saying, I am the church. I am the church. He keeps saying, I am the church. And he keeps saying, we. But this young woman accused only Biodon Fatoibo. So that is he's telling his church member, you guys need to queue behind me so that we can intimidate people on social media. I don't know. My view is based on what he has written here. The press statement that has written here on his verified Twitter handle that was in circulation yesterday up till now. is not whether what Busola said is true or not is an allegation but i would want to believe that something happened 
between them whether it was a rape or not that is another thing altogether whether he saw it as a rape or not is another ball thing together why is he insistent on we 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 instead of saying i i i i he's trying to play a psychological game with the church so that the church will feel that an accused of his personality is an accused of the entire church which is a lie it's not true busola dakolo who has made this false allegation and her family attended the church during the earlier start of the church in Ilori in 1999. I never had any private interaction with her beyond my pastoral duties. Looking at her status and that of her husband, I am dumbfounded why she would say such a thing. As expected under the ethics of journalism, it would have been expected that I should have been confronted with this false allegation prior to any publication instead of resorting to social media with the intent to ruin my reputation and bring down the church. Whatever it is, even if they have contacted you with the false allegation, you're quoting journalistic ethics now. Even if they have contacted you with the false allegation prior, it will not stop them from going on the air and it will not stop them from tarnishing your name. Not the church. Koza does not have problem. They are just saying the senior pastor has a problem according to this allegation. So I don't know why he keeps dragging the church in and he's still dragging his members in. To me, it's like he saw a war coming and he does not need to go into the war alone. So he's looking for probably people that will go into this war with him. That's the psychology that people play on foolish people anyway. We will also not stand for false criminal allegation made against me or the church. The leadership of the church and I have briefed our lawyers. Why the leadership of the church and I? Why not you? I just don't understand. To commence criminal and civil action against all individuals making such false allegations, whether directly or by proxy. So this is going to say that no vloggers, no bloggers, no anybody should carry the story because he will come for them. So to me, the way I perceive this particular paragraph is like he's trying to threaten the people so that he can kill the news. But you know, you can't take us to court if we are just giving our opinion based on what you have said and what mrs dakolo has said so you can't take us anywhere and we are going to talk about it this is video one i'm going to do video two three four five on this particular issue um, that sounds to me like he's trying to threaten us to stay away completely we will as a church pursue every measure within the ambit of the law to bring the culprits to justice now we will as a church jonna we will as a church is it the church that she's accusing why is he carrying them along i don't understand the woman never even mentioned the church from the beginning it was even the interviewer that wanted people to know who biodun fatoyibo was that said biodun fatoyibo of koza church so why are you bringing the church in i don't understand Hmm. We will, as a church, pursue every measure within the ambit of law to bring the corporates to justice. We have heard and we will not be surprised to see more of such allegations by people who have been paid to continue in this line of blackmail. So he is trying to give his church members now, not me, not you, he's trying to give his church members a heads up that a lot of people are going to come out. Pastor Biodon Fatoy, but I'm not saying you're, 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 you're guilty of this allegation. But why are you going ahead of time? This is just one woman that has come out, just like in Sewata came out last time. Now, then you yourself, a lot of other people will come out. I don't understand. Harassing and extort extortion, including those who may have been dismissed from the duties in the church on dis disciplinary grounds. Okay, so there was an allegation that anytime he sleeps with a woman and it becomes public notice and maybe the woman is starting to speak out in the church, they just blacklist her in the church and make people not to talk to her and they make sure that she leaves the church completely. So I'm sure this is what Biodun Fata Yobo is confirming now. Yes, he's confirming it indirectly by saying that the people blackmail, harass and extort money, including those who may have been dismissed from their duties in the church on disciplinary ground. Wait, let me ask something. I'm not a COSA member, but eh, do they pay workers in the church? Do they pay 
choir members and all these workers that he's talking about that they have been grounded on disciplinary grounds H do they pay them why would they be bitter I am helping your church to grow you don't want it anymore I'll use my time for something else. so why would they be bitter he is trying to confirm something to us that indeed what we have been hearing might be true. I am not saying it's true. I'm just saying that what uh, Biodun Fato Ebo is saying is going to confirm that it might be true. To all our members and those supporting God's work, I want to assure that this is not God's work. So why is he bringing God's work into this place? Why can't you just address the allegation and move? This man is, is using psychology on his church members. To all our members and those supporting God's work, I want to assure you that we would fight this and the Lord. We will. Uh -huh. The allegation was like, you climb a woman. They, said, they didn't say we. They didn't say the church. So why, are you, why do you keep saying we? We will fight this and the Lord will vindicate us. Ah, Jehovah. This has always been intended to attack the church. This is the intent of the adversaries. The intent is to destroy the church. So please stay focused and prayerful. God bless you. I celebrate you. Why is he celebrating his church member now? What have the church member done for him to celebrate them? See the psychology I'm talking about. It's like, join me, join me. I'm going to the world. Don't leave me alone. No, I love you. I celebrate you. In this thing I have read to me, Pastor Biodun Fato Ibo has said a lot that if you read within the lines, you will see it. Uh, to me, it sounded like someone that has done terrible things and he's scared that it might be coming back to him. That's why he's expecting that there will be more people that will come out. That's why he's confirming that a lot of people have been extorting money from him. You know, if you have not done something wrong, why will you allow people to extort money from you? You know, and all of that. It's so funny. All these things work. And from this place, Fatwa Ibo did not deny whether or not he had a relationship with uh, Mrs. Dakolo. The only thing he is saying is that he has never raped anybody. So he didn't really deny whether he had a relationship with how, you know. He didn't deny it. He just said he has never raped anybody, even before he gave his life to Christ and after. So go through it yourself and let me see what you have what you made out of this particular statement and then I'll come back with a lot of people that have come out now to claim that Fato Yubo has done something with them. After the rain, joy comes in the morning.